Good morning and welcome to New Light Church here in Deland, Florida. We welcome those that are here in person and also those that are viewing us on Facebook and on YouTube. Uh, we are a small church, but we are large in spirit. And if you are in the area and are looking for a church home, we cordially invite you. Um, while we're on Facebook and YouTube, uh, we have not, and uh, hopefully and prayerfully, we will not have to ask for money. If you uh, would like to make a contribution, of course, we will accept it. And uh, we will not put your name on a list. Uh, you will not be asked for money through the mail. Uh, as I've said earlier, we do not sell books or CDs or uh, <clears throat> great wisdom like that. As soon as we get something smart from God, we pass it on to you right now. We don't wait and write about it or, or videotape it. So we also welcome your suggestions and your comments, and we pray that today's service, as you watch, will be a uh, fulfilling a worshipful time for you and for your faith. Our praise medley this morning is printed in your bulletins. Please join along.
said they uh, like the guy that played the drums better than the guy that preaches the sermons. <laughs> so I guess I need to inform everybody that's the same guy. <laughs> we, uh, in our time of prayer, we know that there are some unspoken prayers uh, that you have, and uh, we lift those up, those closet prayers as well. Uh, one of our uh, people, Chuck McLaughlin, is still in the hospital, and uh, we will keep you up to date on that. Also, uh, Chip Wendner's sister, Dawn, is healing from a fall, and Beverly Wolford is still in the process of uh, mourning and grieving for uh, the passing of her husband, and the uh, services uh, have not been announced as of yet. We've also been asked to lift up Joan Aldris and her family. Uh, her sister-in-law, Iona, passed away this week. Uh, Roger Marcel had an MRA, MRI, and could have had MRA too, I just don't know. Uh, and uh, we're hoping that turns out well. Uh, Bill Adderman uh, is still in rehab from hip surgery and uh, has now been moved to the second floor at the Cloisters. Uh, Tyler Rouse, Rouse is going through radiation treatments, and uh, Tyler Peden is making baby steps with rehab, trying to regain movement with all of his appendages. Also, uh, Norma's son, uh, Curtis Babel, Babel, Babel is, uh, get that mixed up with the Tower of Babel in the Old Testament, uh, needs our prayers. Also, one of uh, Fawn's employees, uh, is now visiting with her mother in the hospital and we need to lift her up. Also my grandson Christian's uh, grandmother, other grandmother, um, has had a stroke uh, in Albany, Georgia and we need to lift uh, that whole family up. Also Anna at the College Arms is going through surgery and we need to lift her up as well. If you have special requests you can contact Fawn uh, on Facebook or on YouTube, and we will list those according to your needs. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Good morning, our most gracious Heavenly Father. What a joy, what a comfort, what a time of peace and security, a time of assurance to be able to, even if momentarily, just turn the world off. Allow this to be a time where we commune with our Creator. Allow this to be a time where we feel your love. But we do come in our country, in our nation, in our world at a critical time. We ask for your guidance, your wisdom, and your discernment as we make difficult decisions. You are our Lord and you are above all our Savior. So we covet your love and your presence. We thank you this day for our life, for our freedom, and for our liberty. Our profession of faith is to serve you in action and in faith. Help us to be just not hearers of the word, but doers of the word. Keep us close to your word in thought and prayer in our daily conversations with other people. Help us to be better witnesses and better disciples. We do lift up those that are in the hospital those that are in rehabs, those maybe just may, may be at home recovering, or those that continue in a lockdown status. We accept you as our master physician. As always, we lift up our first responders of fire and the police and the doctors and the hospitals and the retail workers. We also lift up those young men and women who are serving our country through the military. Now watch over and keep us, forgive us of our sins of omission as well as our sins of commission. We pray that you will lead us and guide us and direct us 
along your paths of righteousness. For it is in your Son's name that each of us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the glory forever. Thank you. 
someone on Facebook just asked, as I was looking at our monitor, that uh, we didn't have the camera on all the choir. <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> that was the whole choir. <laughs> so we did move it a little bit because my mother-in-law was cut out. <laughs> so we. Sometimes the uh, devil gets inside me and secretly wishes that I could go back 40 years and uh, in a time I think maybe perception is a little distorted, but in a time when uh, everything seemed to be more peaceful, more calm, and uh, the issues that we addressed did not seem so dramatic or monumental. I don't know if it's because of my age, which might be part of it, but I also think a lot of it is that we see our world quickly heading toward the promises that Jesus gave us about the end of this world and uh, our eternal destiny. When uh, Moses was in preparation for leading the people out of Egypt, he was doing a good job, but he was doing it all himself. His father-in-law came to him and sat him down and said, Look, there is no way that you're going to be able to do this by yourself. You need some help. What you need are some judges. Now remember back then there were no Republicans, no Democrats, no independents, no formal form of government except for what the Egyptians had. So. Moses felt the call and let, led the people into a time of judgment and their judges would be selected and those judges would settle the uh, differences of opinion, would handle domestic issues, would handle uh, philosophical, theological, and uh, economic issues of the people. So you see the idea of clergy being involved in everyday matters and everyday politics is not new. I suggest to you that a part of the problem that our countries are facing this day is because a lot of wimpy preachers have backed out of their responsibility and their duty. And that is to address the depravity and the sin and the everyday activities of their people. We do not have the philosophy, or we should not have the philosophy, of living and letting live, and then let them, let, letting them come to church on Sunday morning and giving them a little bit of spiritual candy to suck on, enough maybe to hold them till next week. God has called us as Christians to be judges of this world and to be judges of our own behavior and to be judges of what's going on around us. And if we do not address it, well, we see the results and we see the effect. I want to share with you from the book of Exodus, uh, beginning in, that, in chapter 18, and just uh, a little bit of that story I was just sharing with you. And it came to pass on the next day or on the morrow that Moses sat to judge the people, and the people stood by Moses from the morning until the evening. You see, Moses was having to sit over and was having to judge all the different affairs going on with his people. But that made him a very busy man. From sun up till sundown, people were standing in line and saying, what about this income tax? What about this uh, issue that I have with my husband? What about this problem that I'm having with my uh, teenage daughter? What about this situation with that group over there always trying to boss us around? What do we do? This is what Moses did all of his waking hours. And when Moses' father-in-law saw all that he did to the people, he said, what is, the, what is this thing that thou doest to the people? Why sittest thou self alone? And all the people stand by thee from morning until evening. And Moses said unto his father-in-law, Because the people come unto me to inquire of God. You know, Moses is not defensive, but he says, Look, what am I supposed to do? I'm the leader. I'm the head guy that's going to lead everybody out of, of bondage. What do you want me to do? Tell these people I'm busy? 
When they have a matter, they come unto me, and I judge between one and another. And I do make them know the statutes of God and the laws. Isn't that something? Making decisions based upon the law of God. What a unique idea. Here we see a government forming with helps. And Moses' father-in-law said unto him, The thing that thou doest is not good. You're going to kill yourself. You've got to slow down. You've got to let some other people help you. You have to trust other people's judgment. Thou wilt surely wear away both thou and this people that is with thee, for this thing is too heavy for you. You can't handle it. That thou art not able to perform it thyself alone. Hearken now unto my voice. I will give thee counsel, and God shall be with thee. Be thou for the people to Godward, that thou mayest bring the causes unto God. And thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws, and shalt show them the way wherein they must walk, and the work that they must do. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men, such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands and rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties and rulers of ten. That's me. <laughs> and let, no, we have more than that. <laughs> And let them judge the people at all seasons. And it shall be that every great matter that they shall bring unto thee, but every small matter they shall judge. So shall it be easier for thyself, and they shall bear the burden with thee. And then my text comes from verse 23. If thou shalt do this thing, and God command thee so, then thou shalt be able to endure. What a word. And it's only found in the King James Version, that word endure. And all this people shall, shall also go to their place in peace. There's a strange phenomena on the railroad. And if you stand in the middle of the tracks and there is an oncoming train, you cannot hear it. There is no sound. If you're out in the middle of the woods and there's an oncoming train, all you can hear or see is the breezes blowing through the trees on either side of the track. As a matter of fact, that train can travel all the way up within a foot of where you're standing in the middle of the track and you will still not hear a sound. Of course, you don't hear anything when it runs you over either. Evil is just like that. It's like the frog in the, ke in the kettle. It's like the caterpillars walking around a rim following each other until they die. With the frog, it's one degree at a time. Jesus said, as far as this evil, watch out. The train is coming. You will not hear me. You won't even see me. But it may be too late. I will come, Jesus says, as a thief in the night. In World War II, as Germany was overtaking the Slavic countries, the Red Army promised that when they beat Hitler, they would protect countries like Czechoslovakia and Yugoslavia. But there was one pastor, one poor little parish pastor. His name was Father Klo Klovic. He knew the evilness of the communist, the socialist, and those who believed in totalitarianism. The first priority of any oppressive movement is to subdue the clergy. Did you know that? Look at history. The first movement of any oppressive government is to get rid of the clergy. It has been the clergy down through the ages of time, beginning here with Moses himself, that have been the town criers that danger is approaching. 
You're standing in the middle of the track and there's an oncoming train that's, that's going 120 miles an hour. But I can't hear it. I can't hear it. Doesn't make any difference if you can hear it or not. It's coming. This pastor that I just mentioned preached that only a total life commitment to Christ would enable and would prepare them for the upcoming trials, persecution, and the takeover of their country. Now, I'm not going to tell you what I think is going to happen November 3rd. It's not my business to tell you how to vote, who to vote for. But it is my business to tell you what I discern and what I see. God has called me and has called you to be judges of what's going on around us. And when we begin to see anti-God movements, no matter what label is on them, we need to learn how to stand up and take a stand. He knew, this particular pastor in World War II, he knew that he was not going to be able to stop what he saw coming. And you know what? I identify with him. Because I don't see myself having the time, the ability, the expertise, or the wisdom, or the discernment to stop what I see coming in our country. I don't have that power. And that pastor felt the same way. But he said, there is something that I can do. I can equip my people on how to act and how to react and keep the faith during oppressive times and with wicked rulers. And that's what he did. Of course, as he had predicted and as he knew, when the communists did and the Red Army did beat, was a part, a small part of beating Adolf Hitler, that soon after that victory, the communists began to take over and took those little countries that they had promised to protect and watch over. And you know the first thing they did was they went looking for this parish priest. Had to get him out of there. He preached too much freedom, too much liberty, too much self-reliance, too much accountability. This little priest, I don't know if he was little or not, but his number was insignificant. Preached, give yourself totally to Christ. Throw all your worries and desires on Him. I'm not pessimistic. I don't like to be negative. But I tell you, I see some rough stuff coming down in our country in the next few weeks. I can't stop it. But what I can do is prepare you for it. And I can tell you that no matter how rough times get, that I would have you look toward Christ and I would have you feel like no matter how rough it gets that everything is going to be okay just like Moses' father-in-law if you hang in there and if you do what God tells you to do you will be able to endure the pastor taught that every person must be accountable to God for their actions freedom you see is responsibility it is a means to live with the truth Jesus said, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Minimizing the cries of the clergy through the years and in the past and will in the future take us right down to the tracks of bondage. And before we know it, that train has not only approached us in a very silent way, but has run over our freedom completely. To ensure this type of oppression the clergy must be removed and most of all must be kept out of politics. Preacher, you've got no business messing in politics. Let me tell you something. I've got more business being involved in politics than politicians do. The clergy must be removed, they say. Must be kept out of politics must be kept out of social issues, and most of all must be kept out of government. We don't want a bunch of religious, Christ, God-like thinking people in our government. That's what they're saying. It works. It works for them. 
Look at Cuba. I lived in South Florida when the great flotilla came over here. It was an awful sight. I remember my friends and I going down to the beach and watching rafts made out of inner tubes, straw, empty cans, barrels, bathtubs, anything that they could put in the water and would float. Many of them landing on the beach there in Lake Worth, West Palm Beach, falling down on the sand, kissing the ground. They had found freedom and they had left oppression. They had left all of the promises that were made to them and for them. And those that were the wisest saw it coming and knew that it was all lies and deception. Look at Venezuela, look at Russia, look at China, look at North Korea. I don't say to be a Republican or a Democrat or a liberal or a conservative, but rather how about being a disciple of Christ? He will get you through this, and you will endure. In 1992, Venezuela became the third richest country in the hemisphere. In 97, it became the largest, second largest purchaser of the Ford F-150. 2001, they voted for a socialist president income equality, making sure everybody had the same amount of money. 2004, private health care is completely socialized. You do understand I'm talking about Venezuela. 2007, all higher education becomes free. You don't have to pay to go to college. 2009, socialists ban private ownership of guns. 2012, Bernie Sanders praised their American dream. In 2014, the opposition leaders are imprisoned. 2016, food and health care shortages became widespread. 2017, constitution and elections are suspended. 2019, unarmed citizens massacred by its own government. It only took one generation of progressive leadership to plunge this country into a civil war. Only God has the answer to all of the chaos in this world. And that answer is Christ. That answer is Jesus of Nazareth. As we are successfully removing and impeding our faith, we are being sucked into a cesspool of depravity. But it's okay, people. It's okay, children. God will help you endure. And God will supply you the leadership that you need to make the journey. God is the answer to corruption, racism, New Green Deal, First Amendment, Second Amendment, class warfare, poverty and sanctity of life, preborn, and the aged like you and me with wrinkles on their face. Sanctity of life. If Planned Parenthood was killing puppy dogs and little kittens, they would have been shut down years ago. I'm asking this for a friend. This is not my question. <laughs> I'm asking this for a friend. If you vote for a person who advocates abortion, are you an accessory to murder? I'm not going to tell you my answer. That's up to you. If you vote for a person that advocates abortion, even up to late term abortion, are you an accessory to murder? Racism. It's not about the color of the skin. It's about power and control. As I listen to many great black leaders today that are coming out and speaking out, and they're saying, you know, we've been hoodwinked. We've been tricked. We've been fooled. 
And we've been turned into a color of, of victims. And we're discovering that if we'll do what we need to do, if we we'll get the proper education, if we'll work hard, if we have a good work ethic, my gosh, we can do just as good as the white people. Am I saying that all racism has been eradicated? No. Racism in one form or another will always be here. That's the nature of man. One of the devices to gain and keep power and control over people is to maintain a class system. You've got to separate the classes. You've got to separate the colors. If you don't, you have no victims. Fighting with each other. Fighting with each other gives others power and control. Two of the best experts in this field are Jesse Jackson, and I will not put a reverend in front of his name. And the other one is Al Sharpton. They are full of stuff with no substance. University of Minnesota is now offering a lecture teaching a 12-step AA type program to recover from being white. I don't have time to read all the steps, but I'll give you a few of them. We admitted that we have been socially conditioned by the ideology of white supremacy. And they're teaching this course to our young people. We came to believe that we could embrace our ignorance as an invitation to learn. We were entirely ready to de deconstruct previous ways of knowing as they have been developed through the lens of white supremacy. I'd like to feel supreme just one day to see what it feels like. <laughs> I'd like to be superior just for one day to know. We committed ourselves to ongoing study of our racial biases, conscious or unconscious, and our manipulative patterns of white supremacist thinking. We embrace the responsibility of focusing on our impact more than our intentions and interactions with people of color. We engage in daily practices of self-reflection. We commit and we're committed ourselves to sharing this message with our white brothers and sisters and siblings in order to build a supportive recovery community and to engage personal accountability with our culture. You know, the only time that I feel any racism or bias coming into my life is when someone tells me I'm a racist. You will always be here. It doesn't make it right. And yes, we need to do everything we can do to eradicate it. And if I can be but that much of a part of eradicating racism, I want to be a part of it. But I am not going to apologize for being the color that I am. To do that would be blasphemy because this is the way God made me. This is the way God made Mr. B in the back. This is the way God made every race, every creed, every color. Be proud of it. God made us all different for some reason. Let's quit making one over the other as victims. Those 12 steps, or a few of them, that I just read sounds like now I'm going to become a victim. Second Amendment. A Christian issue, you say? You bet. It was put there in the Constitution to protect citizens against government tyranny and personal protection. You see, in Venezuela, that was one of the first things they did was take all and outlaw all weapons. And then when the government came in to take them over and to control everything, they had nothing to respond with. Vice President Biden was asked just in the last week or so if he wins the election, is one of his goals and motives to come in and to take all the guns from the people? And here's his answer. Bingo. First Amendment, freedom of speech, Facebook, Twitter now is openly and blatantly suppressing new stories, opinions that those who operate these companies disagree with. I'll bet you that my wife has been put and taken off Facebook more times than everybody put here together. 
free speech. Openly, blatantly, no apologies. I myself have tried to put something on. Not nasty, not mean, just Christian. And it never makes it. I asked Fawn, did you see that, what I put on Facebook today? No, I didn't see it. Well, it never got posted. <laughs> Believe me, God will supply the body of Christ a way for us to communicate with each other. And we don't have to be full of fear. We have been bamboozled into thinking that we need to be afraid of something. We need to be afraid if so-and-so is not elected come November 3rd. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that before. In the 1960s, we were told that oil would be gone in 10 years. Isn't it funny how we've discovered we have more oil than what we'll ever need for the rest of the world's time? Of course, the way you make people victims is you take the oil away and you turn it into a green deal. In the 70s, we were told that there would be another ice age in 10 years. In the 80s, we were told that acid rain would destroy all crops in 10 years. In the 1990s, we were told the ozone, ozone labor would be destroyed in 10 years. In the 2000s, we were told that ice caps will be gone in 10 years. Nothing's happened except our taxes have been raised. Fear is not science. Fear is politics. Fear is not theological. Fear is anti-God. Then there is religious persecution that we're confronted with. How is it that we can elect multiple Muslims into office? COS or KOZ or what's her initials? <laughs> along with the three others have advocated and pushed and have won Islam being taught in schools. But a Christian on the Supreme Court sends the left crazy. Candidate for President of the United States, Joe Biden says about Muslims, and I quote, I will end the Muslim ban on day one. Green New Deal, political, fossil fuels, takes oils to run windmills. Did you know that? <laughs> takes more oil to run a windmill for generating. Takes 50 times more oil than my home generator for one house. Just to keep it going. Saw a picture on Facebook this last week and there was an oil leak in one of the windmills. Those things are astronomical financially and it takes more money to run them than they do than they produce. Immorality being shoved down our throats. The former vice pre well, yeah, the former vice president and I quote again on immorality and transgender sex. The idea, and I'm quoting so the English is going to be a little messed up, the idea that an eight-year-old child or ten-year-old child says, you know, I decided I want to be transgender. That's what I think I'd like to be. That would make my life a lot easier. There should be zero, and then Biden goes on to say, there should be zero discrimination. What's happening is too many trans, transgender women of color are being murdered. They are being murdered. And uh, I'm a, I mean, I think it's up to now 17. Don't hold me to that number, but it's, it's uh, uh, I mean, it's higher now. And just, and that's just this year. And so I promise you, there is no reason to suggest that there should be any right denied your daughters or daughters. Whichever or one or two, one your daughter or that your other daughter has a right to be and do, none, zero. And by the way, my son, Bo, passed away. He was the Attorney General of the state of Delaware and he was the guy that got the first transgender law passed in the state of Delaware 
and uh, because of a young man who became a woman and who worked for him in the AG's office. Sorry for the language, but I did not want to mess up the quotes. But there it is. Listen to the word of the Lord. Romans 8, what shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord, to them that are called according to his purpose, for whom he did foreknowledge, etc., etc. God is here, my friends, and he's not left the building. He lives in your thoughts, your faith, and your actions. We may be discouraged, distraught, disgruntled, but with Christ being in us, we will not be destroyed, despaired, or desolate. God is watching over you. There is our battle against evil. Ephesians 6.12 says, Our battle is not with flesh and blood, but rather with principalities and evils in high places. We must pick our battles. I pick my battles in my own home. I learned that when there's a disagreement between my wife and I, she's always right and I'm always wrong. And that brings on a lot of peace. Yeah. And a lot of compromise on my part. <laughs> it's okay to debate over policies and procedures. It's okay to talk about and disagree with friends and family on the economy, foreign policy, immigration, Green New Deal, health care, speed limit on the interstates. We worship in many styles as Christians, as parts of the body of Christ. We worship as Pentecostals, liturgical, conservative, and charismatic. However, there are some non-negotiable issues and tenets of the faith that cannot be discussed or compromised. Abortion is one of them. The way to heaven or the way to hell will not be full of people that the Lord rejected, but it will be full of people that rejected the Lord. I don't want to leave Camilla Harris out of this discussion. Remember a few years ago when two undercover journalists exposed that Planned Parenthood was selling aborted baby parts? That's a felony. And the California Attorney General prosecuted the journalist. Went in in the middle of the night, woke them up in their pajamas, threw them out of bed, and confiscated all of their research material. Not one thing was done to Planned Parenthood. Not one thing. For a friend, if you advocate and you vote for someone who advocates and supports and legislates abortion? Are you guilty of murder for a friend? Our enemy is relentless. I remember as a kid they had this game set up in, in some game places and it was a board about this big and it had a bunch of holes in it and you were given a pugil stick and these little heads would pop up out of these holes and you would try to beat one of them down before it went down by itself and that's how your score was determined. That's where we are. We're, we're trying to beat those heads down in those holes before a point goes against us. Satan is the master of deception. Through this national election, the devil's polls are way up. There are those who continue to advocate defunding of the police. Hitler defunded police so he could bring in the brown shirts and the Gestapo. But don't be afraid. It's okay. God is with us and God is with you. And no evil can ultimately win you over. For upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covet, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, 
incompetent, fierce despisers of those that are good, traitors, head-minded, heady, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, and purpose, Paul says, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, and Lystra, what persecutions I endured. There's that word. But out of all of them, the Lord delivered me. My friends, the Lord is going to deliver us out of this. It may not be in this world, but we've been promised delivery, and we're not going FedEx or UPS. We're going with Jesus meeting us in the clouds. I charge thee, therefore, Paul said to his young pastor, therefore before God that the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead is appearing in his kingdom, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. Paul says, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. And then finally in Matthew 25, 21, his Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Trains real close. Trains real close. And it's traveling at 120 miles an hour down the main line. Get out of track. Get off of it. As a clergyman, as a pastor, as a father, as a grandfather, as a husband, as a minister of the gospel and a disciple of Christ, I implore you to put your worries aside. Be concerned. Be active. But don't worry. If you haven't accepted Christ, this is the invitation to you. Trust in the Lord. Be of good cheer. Cover your joy. Repent of your sins. As you will endure all afflictions through the grace of God. Read your Bible. Attend worship. Support your ministry wherever and whoever that might be with, with your tithes and your offerings not more than five minutes that you turn on the television then politicians are begging for money I remember and I'm sure you do too when we said well one day it's going to cost a million dollars to get to be president a million dollars won't buy ten minutes worth of TV time on a couple of stations we're now talking about billions of dollars the trains here and it's going to pass by quickly don't be left at the station. I shared that story with you a couple of weeks ago. That's a horrible feeling. God is waiting for you to pick up the ticket. As you go to the ticket agent and get ready to pay for it, the ticket agent says, no, I'm sorry. Your ticket's already been paid for. All you have to do is get on the train. He's already purchased it for you.
Christians, it has been our history to be an enduring people, and that will not change. God bless you. God be with you. God give you the strength, the discernment, and the wisdom, and the courage to get through this mess we're about to go through. He will. And now as Almighty God sits at the throne of heaven through the grace of His Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Make his face shine upon you and be great.